scrotum. Anatomy of the scrotum. The scrotum is a bag of skin containing the testes, containing the epididymis, containing the lower part of the spermatic cord. The scrotum uh, in male corresponding to the labia majora in female. The external feature of uh, the scrotum. The skin of the scrotum is corrugated due to the presence of a muscle in the subcutaneous tissue called dartos muscle. And on the outer surface, the scrotum is divided into two sides, right and left side, by a median scrotal raphi. Internally, internally the scrotum is divided into a right and left side by a median scrotal septum, which is made by this muscle, which is the dartos, and the fibrous tissue septum in between the two sides. Um, what is the layers of the spermatic cord? Uh, sorry, the layers of the scrotum. This is very beautiful uh, picture for the layers of the anterior abdominal wall, which continue downward as the layers of the scrotum. This is the skin of the anterior abdominal wall. Sure, it will continue downward as the skin of the scrotum and becomes continuous with the skin of the scrotum. Subcutaneous tissue. Subcutaneous tissue of the anterior abdominal wall is formed of two layers. Superficial fatty layer and deep membranous layer called scarbus fascia. The superficial fatty layer of the superficial fascia of the abdomen enters to the scrotum. But once it enters in the scrotum, it loses its fat. And this layer in the scrotum shows no fat, and the fat becomes replaced by involuntary muscle, a smooth muscle called dartos muscle. Dartos muscle is a smooth muscle supplied by the autonomic nervous system. It has a sympathetic supply. Um, the deep membranous layer of superficial fascia of the abdomen continue downward into the scrotum. And its name is changed to coolis fascia this black line. Therefore, the layers of scrotum now is skin, dartos muscle, and oculis fascia. What is this black line? This is the outermost muscle of the anterior abdominal wall, which is external abdominal oblique. Sure, this is the spermatic cord. And from the external abdominal oblique around the spermatic cord descend this fascia which will be which uh, was taken in the previous video of the spermatic cord this fascia around the spermatic cord and the form layer of the layers of scrotum in the same time is called external spermatic fascia this muscle is the internal abdominal oblique and in the previous video of the spermatic cord, the internal abdominal oblique gives this U-shaped muscle, the red line, which is called the cremasteric muscle and fascia. And finally, this is the internal inguinal ring, which is opening in the fascia transversalis. And during the descent of the structure of spermatic cord, we take around the spermatic cord this fascia. This fascia which is called the internal spermatic fascia. 
Now there are six layers of scrotum. Three in the skin and subcutaneous tissue. And the three actually layers which are coverings of spermatic cord. Skin, dartus, colis fasci. These are three cutaneous and subcutaneous covering. And the three covering from the spermatic cord. The covering of spermatic cord which are external spermatic fascia, cremasteric muscle and fascia, and the internal spermatic fascia. Um, there is another covering, the seventh cover, which is the parietal layer of tunica vaginalis, which will not, which does not appear in this picture. And we will know what is the parietal layer of the tunica vaginalis when we uh, study together the testes. Um, what is the arterial supply of uh, the scrotum? The arterial supply of the scrotum is superficial and deep, external biodendal vessels. Superficial and deep external biodendal vessels uh, gives anterior scrotal branches to the anterior aspect of the scrotum. And the cremasteric artery. The cremasteric artery supplies the cremasteric muscle, which is one layer of the layers of the scrotum. The posterior surface of the scrotum is supplied by posterior scrotal arteries. Posterior scrotal arteries, which are branches from the internal biodendal artery. Um, what is the nerve supply of uh, the scrotum? The nerve supply of the scrotum two nerve supply from anterior and two nerve supply from posterior. The ilioinguinal nerve and genital branch of genitofemoral nerve and both are from L1 gives the anterior scrotal branches which supply the anterior one third of the scrotum. Sensory, we will divide the scrotum into anterior one third and posterior two third. The anterior one third is from L1. Scrotal branches of ilioinguinal and the scrotal branches of genital branch of genitofemoral nerve. While the posterior surface of the scrotum is innervated from S3. S3 through posterior scrotal branches. What are the posterior scrotal branches? Posterior scrotal branches from brineal nerve. Brineal nerve is a branch from the biodendal nerve. This is a biodendal nerve, gives the brineal branch, and the brineal, nerves, a brineal branch gives the posterior scrotal branches. This is the main nerve supply to the posterior to cell. Um, here, uh, not appear in this picture, but imagine with me. Here, uh, passing to the back of the thigh, posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh. The posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh passing here to the back of the thigh gives a scrotal branch to the scrotum, called the perineal branch of posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh. Therefore, the posterior to third is supplied by posterior scrotal from perineal nerve and perineal branch of posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh. Motor supply is motor supply to the dartus and the cremasteric muscle. Dartus uh, is uh, a smooth muscle supplied by sympathetic fibers, which reach 
the fibers uh, to the muscle through the cremasteric nerve and there is cremasteric uh, muscle supplied by the cremasteric nerve which is a branch, of, a branch from genitofemoral nerve lymphatic drainage of the scrotum the skin of the scrotum is drained by superficial inguinal lymph nodes these famous lymph nodes along the long softness superficial inguinal uh, applied uh, anatomy Applied anatomy, this is the shape of the scrotal blood vessels, which pass transversely. Think with me. In incision of the scrotum, you prefer to do vertical longitudinal incision or transverse incision parallel to the blood vessel. Sure, in any incision, we should be, the incision should be parallel to the important structures and the parallel to the blood vessels to minimize bleeding therefore we prefer transverse scrotal incision to avoid excessive bleeding from the scrotal blood vessels um, the scrotum is a distensible structure can be distend, 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 distend to reach a huge size like this this is the size and the scrotum reach to about just above the knee. This is the knee joint. What causes this huge size of the scrotum? This huge size of scrotum may be huge oblique inguinal hernia. Oblique inguinal hernia is the only hernia which can reach the scrotum. Uh, huge oblique inguinal hernia, huge hydrocele or in case of chronic lymphatic obstruction in the famous disease which is called lymphedema and elephantiasis. Uh, Balbation of the neck of the scrotum is very important clinically to differentiate. If the swelling above your finger, it is inguinal swelling in the inguinal canal. If the scrotum is below your fingers only, this is swelling is a scrotal swelling like hydrocele if the swelling is above your finger then pass between your finger down to the scrotum the swelling is called inguino scrotal swelling um, oblique inguinal hernia is the only hernia which can reach the, to the scrotum what is oblique inguinal hernia oblique inguinal hernia is a hernia pass through the internal inguinal ring and they pass through the internal inguinal ring it passes through inside the covering of the spermatic cord and with the covering of the spermatic cord its way is very easy to descend with the structures of the spermatic cord to the bottom of the scrotum the commonest scrotal swelling is hydrocele the commonest swelling inside the scrotum inside is hydrocele but the commonest swelling in the skin of the scrotum is the sebaceous cyst because the skin of the scrotum is hairy and full of sebaceous gland and normally the sebaceous gland secrete and secretions comes out on the skin if the opening of the duct of the sebaceous gland becomes obstructed the secretion arises and the duct is obstructed. The secretion arises and the duct is obstruction, leading to retention cyst in the sebaceous gland, called the sebaceous cyst. The commonest swelling in the skin of scrotum is sebaceous cyst. This is the scrotum. Thank you for good listening and good luck.